So my name is Aiden Lefebvre, and I am the curator here at Grace Gallery in Brantford, Ontario. In behind me are wonderful artwork and original pieces done by artists in Brantford, Ontario, and the surrounding areas, as well as national artists and international artists. So if you want to come and check that out sometime, just make an appointment, come and see the gallery, or come and check it out on one of our monthly events through First Friday or GGPSN, when GGPSN starts up again in 2021. But First Fridays are continuing, and the next one is Friday, October the 2nd. And now with the introductions, we have Kathy Leung Rosnick, and she is a model, actress, MC, singer, and by day, she is an elementary school teacher. That sounds very elementary, my dear. <laughs> Kathy is also the public relations director of the Richmond Hill Arts Council, and she is the title holder of the 2019 Miss Canada's Top Choice Pageant, and she also took home the Miss Congeniality Sash. She recently placed fifth on Icing 2020 Canada as well. Tyra Rosnick, who's the other young lady that you see here, she is a model and a dancer, and she is also an athlete who plays for the Richmond Hill Lightning Ringette team. She has accumulated many bronze, silver, and gold medals. Tyra is the first runner-up title holder of Miss Teen Canada's Top Choice 2019 and was awarded the Runway Model Sash. Now, is there anything else in your introductions that you guys would like to add to it? We'll start with you, Kathy. Oh, Aiden, that was awesome. Thank you so much for, for those great introductions that was there. But before I go into that, I just want to give you a kudo congratulations. This whole weekend with all the um, interviews that you've been doing with the celebration of culture days that's going across Canada and different cities and of course Brantford, you've done so much work and you know a lot of gratitude, a lot of thanks um, to, to arranging this. It would have been nice to be there this weekend, but we're going to be there soon later on. Yes. Tyra, is there anything you'd like to add to your introduction? Um, basically everything was said about me, um, but more, we'll get more into that as we go through this interview. <laughs> yeah. Did you want to explain what ringette is? Because I had to look it up. I actually didn't know what it was, but it looks to me exactly the same as hockey. The only difference is it's played with a stick and the puck is round, but it's got a hole in the center. Yeah, um, ringette is a Canadian invented sport uh, designed for women at the time. Um, it is a uh, ice skating sport, one of the fastest uh, ice skating uh, sports uh, at the moment, I think. And um, there, it's basically very similar to hockey. You still have your defense, your forwards um, or wingers and uh, your centers and your goalie. And it's, it's very, it's very fun. It's very competitive. Um, there's a whole range of different places that come to compete. Mm -hmm. the it's, only it's thing very I competitive, yes. Yeah, the only thing I didn't see with ringette was a lot of body checking. I don't think that's allowed, is it? No, they're, they're um, yeah, that, that's not allowed. If you do that, you'll probably get a penalty. <laughs> There's a lot of passing in the sport. There's a lot of uh, moving the ring moving the ring across the blue that. line, which is very different to to hockey. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teamwork has to be involved in order to uh, to win the game. Yeah, and if it is Canadian invented, well, so is hockey, right? So oh, is, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was invented ball. in North Bay, so it started up in North Bay. It is a Canadian sport. Yes, definitely. Like Sam Jacks. Yes, yes. Sam Jacks. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, lots of lots of sports were created by Canadians. There was basketball. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. There was hockey. Yes. There was basketball. lacrosse. Lacrosse there is was a baseball. Baseball. Yes. Canadian sport. <laughs> All of these are Canadian. Can you believe it? Yes. They are. Baseball. No, no. <laughs> baseball is one of the unknowns. A lot of people would think 
American because they're all played in America, right? But it was yeah. actually mm -hmm. created in Belleville, Ontario, not very Belleville, far from mm -hmm. Brantford. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know it was in Belleville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was invented in Belleville. Wow. Of all mm -hmm. the tiny rinky dinky places. <laughs> That's why it's not so well known because it's it's much smaller than Brantford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a tiny pocket. And if you it's like a little tiny town that if you drive through it and you blink, you'll miss the town. <laughs> It's not it's gotten a lot bigger, but that yes, is it is. That's true. Very true. Yes. <laughs> the last time I was there, is not much, much to see at the moment. But yeah, it is. There. It is. It is developing. Yeah, it's an old, <laughs> very old town. Mm -hmm. right. Now we get to go on to ta da the questionnaire. All right, this is the fun <laughs> part. All right. So we have question number one. This is no. all, this is all Tyra. Not, 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 not so. <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> yes, they are because well, actually, no, that's not true. She's an elementary. Not true. Yeah, that's right. She's an elementary teacher. That's right. That's right. So that's true. I guess that's true. All right. So, um, number one, what was the first thought? you had about going back to school when you have been out for many months my let's, first thought was she get... was out of the house but <laughs> but no i'm at i'm at all home. right let's give this one to uh let's start with tyra on this one um so basically i haven't technically been outside of school other than physically um when school went um off and we weren't able to be uh, in in school grounds, yeah. they immediately went online, and so I found that a lot of the times the teachers actually increased the amount of assignments that we had to do. Um, so it didn't really feel like I was out of school at all. But um, regardless, I was I was pretty uh, excited um, to see how it's all going to go down because it was a new experience for everyone. All right, and now Kathy. Well, I've been out of school since since March because I'm actually a, I supply teach more often. Um, so a lot of the times during that time frame, um, I was not in school, but I've been returning to school right now. So it's kind of excited to to go to the various schools, but also a little concerned to make sure that I'm following the protocol, following the safety and that the students that who don't know me particularly well for that particular day um, are also following that and, and, and preparing um, for 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 going in for the teacher that that is away so uh, so it's kind of a little bit uh, exciting uh, but also making sure that uh, I'm aware of the, the the process all right number two what kind of feelings or emotions did you have by going back to school let's start with Tyra on this um for going back to school so at first it was a little unfortunate because it was my last year of high school. So I did miss out on my high school graduation and prom and it is a little um, like unfortunate that uh, my first year of university isn't on campus, but nonetheless, I am still very excited to be back in school. Um, it is different, but it's, it's refreshing in a way. All right, Kathy. Um, I was also very active in um, Tyra School in high school with regards to school council and being involved there. And we know we were talking about from Tyra's perspective, hoping to have a grad uh, celebration in October. Um, looks like that may not happen. So for all those that have had or, or had grad in 2020, uh, congratulations and still celebrate. There's other ways you can celebrate. And Tyra's, I think, classmates did do some online activities to yeah. celebrate the school did some things at the end of the year with social distancing to and and online versions to celebrate um, so so having that that aspect of it um, so um, being involved in the school um, not as much from a mom point of view this year because Tyra's in university um, but from a uh, supply teaching point of view it's just it's nice to see the kids um, do their best uh, and the schools do their best to 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 wear them out and keep the social distancing and keep everyone safe. Number three, what is one fond thing you can think of that you have done or remember over the COVID time? 
let's start with you on this one, Kathy. Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> I slept in more often. That was so cool. I didn't have to get up. I didn't make things. They, they, they're old enough now that you make your own meals. So I, I, I slept. I um, did too. <laughs> Um, but we also we also took advantages of things that that were available. We 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 went walking. Mm -hmm. We found the trails in Richmond Hill that were really cool. Um, bridges, yeah, different walkways that were really interesting. Visited places we we haven't seen yet. That yeah, were like right next door to us, basically. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the cool things that I used to do before, um, but I hadn't actually taken the kids to. Uh, was to the drive-in theater. We actually, when the drive-in theater in phase two started to reopen, we, we, we took the car up to Newmarket and we watched, what did we watch? Uh, Jaws and Jurassic Park. Jaws and Jurassic Park. Nice. Da -da, da -da, da -da. <laughs> so, <laughs> we did have a challenge though, because I didn't, I didn't want to, in the car, use the car stereo because I was always worried about the battery. So we did bring a huge ghetto blaster with lots of batteries with us to tune into the station but the ghetto blaster wasn't digital so yeah. sometimes you getting to... that station was a little more trickier but we did get it we did yeah. get it that time frame so yeah. that was a lot of fun yeah and tyra oh basically the same thing it was a family event and then um i had i had a blast because i've only did it i think once before or with my okay. friends a long time ago um when when uh covid I wasn't in place yet, but um, it was it was a new experience because I never went with my family. All yeah. right, number so four. Was fun. Mm -hmm. What was one thing you did as a family during COVID that you consider a good memory? Let's start Ow. with you, Tyra. <laughs> so far right now, um, we've been going down to uh, the rec center in our building. Um, as a family, we go uh, and we do workouts and we go swimming and trying to keep active and fit while things are available at the moment. Yeah, the kids are trying to keep me active and, and fit, so <laughs> it's been really good. All right, Kathy, your turn. <laughs> It's really tied into that. The our, our rec center has opened with uh, monitoring and, and COVID guidelines. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We're able to book uh, the the time frames for the swimming pool as well as for the gym. So having that uh, ability to go together and have that those activities and kind of stay on top of our health and um, keep our uh, well-being in mind mm -hmm. and peace of mind. It's really important for those to kind of stay um, healthy, not only physically, but also in mind. So spend a lot of time with family, doing things together is, is really key. All right, number five, how has COVID affected your life as a model entertainer? Let's start with you on this one, Kathy. Oh, with me on this one. Yeah. Okay, so as um, Usually as an actress, uh, if I do do some roles or do auditions, I usually go downtown to a site to audition. Um, this time I had a particular audition that I had to record uh, at home online. And it was a lot of fun. It's different because they're taking recordings for auditions. So I had to read the script. Uh, and then I also had to, to, to practice the, the script and then record it. So this is another family thing that we did as well because I had to involve Tyra and I also had to involve my son, uh, Simon as well. And they read part of the script and they also shot me in the video. And we decided that that was quite hilarious. Uh, I'm not sure with the, the, the shooting if it was that uh, um, audition at that time, but we did have a lot of fun. And Tara's got some experience herself with doing uh, shooting as well. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Oh, I was able to um, beforehand when I was in uh, the first semester of uh, grade. Well, I was able to do Humber College in order to learn about film and television. That helped. Yeah, it helped <laughs> a lot for uh, for uh, filming my mom's audition, um, just for lighting as well as uh, positioning of cameras and so such and so forth. Yeah, so that was a different thing with this time frame instead of going direct to to do an audition. Number six, do you see us returning to the old normal ever again? All right, we'll start with Tyra on this one. Um, for the old normal, um, I don't think necessarily that we'll go completely back. 
but I will say that so I think masks may uh, may or not co um, come into like a fashion statement, uh, yeah. whether or not it's required. Um, in terms of you like them beforehand. You yes. actually were wearing masks beforehand. Yes, I was. I, I, I wore them as a fashion statement before uh, they were required, actually. So um, for me, actually, I'm, I'm pretty excited they become a uh, a situated thing in uh, the future. Um, but I will say that uh, I think that our um, hygiene etiquette will uh, continue to to stay um, like become the new normal. Um, as but I would say that I hopefully we get back to being able to see people again and share some great times with people again instead of having I don't know to to stay indoors. <laughs> okay, Kathy. Um, it is going to be a definitely a new normal. Um, I think we're going to take, as humans, we're going to take the positive aspects out of everything that we can when we go through challenges and 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 uh, and, and take those strategies and and how to approach things in, into play. So um, I really think that we will establish new normals. Um, I was actually excited. We were talking about masks. I just happened to have them here, uh, a mask here that was actually. Uh, designed by, by Darcy, a person that I know that just got an Emmy for the, the, the Canadian show production. Um, so it was really cool. So they, they're coming into uh, more of an acceptance um, as a, uh, a way to, to um, protect each other and also a way to just kind of also make your own personal statement if you, if you need to um, as well. But I think the new normal as I was mentioning too, that would be, that would be great would be making sure that we are washing our hands. I think that's important anyways. Um, and then hopefully we can get back to, um, you know, being with people, seeing people, seeing family a little more often and directly rather than on screen and to be able to somehow have the technologies to see the smiles that, that uh, right now we're not always able to see. Right, and number seven, does wearing a mask face covering make you feel comfortable? Why or why not? That so I'll let you answer that. Fyra, because you actually just said something along this line. Uh, for me, it makes me feel comfortable because now uh, it's it's now a common thing to see everyone wearing masks. Uh, whereas for a bit, it was it was mainly only me and maybe a few others that might have worn them uh, as more of a fashion statement. Um, they, in terms of making me feel comfortable in these situations, um, I feel I feel like I'm more comfortable that I may be out of courtesy of others making other people feel more comfortable that I'm wearing a mask. And Kathy. Um, for me, it's been a little bit of a, 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 a chance of um, not not wanting to wear a mask. I do want to wear a mask and, and, and make sure that we're following bylaws and, and laws and proper protocol to, to protect each other. Um, but I do find with teaching, if I am um, talking to students, um, that it does become a challenge to, to actually project inside uh, a mask and sometimes even time to, to breathe. Um, in their conversational when you're trying to, to talk out loud. It becomes a little bit more of a, a challenge there. Also, I know in teaching as well, students like to, to see the, 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 the movement of your lips and they learn from that too. So that becomes a challenge in education um, to, to mask up. But I think later on there, they'll be able to kind of adjust to that to allow us to wear different types of masks so that we still have that protection, but we can still see um, the mouth in order to, to um, allow for learning. Yeah, especially for primary school children, like absolutely, especially yeah. kindergarten and grade one who are just learning how to speak words mm. and not just words, but letters, you know, they're trying to learn the letter A, they're trying to learn the letter absolutely. B, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to teach senior kindergarten grade one and grade two. Right. And, oh, wonderful! Uh, and so I, I do know that uh, I do know that's how they learn. You got to really pronunciate, and you got to really do the. You got to really make sure that you put your 
heart and soul into those letters because there your are your vowels and your consonants for sure. <laughs> you got to make sure that you're uh, you're you're really pronunciating it well because the, those kids are learning just by you doing so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number eight, as a model entertainer, how many hours do you normally practice? So I'm going to give this one to Kathy because she just came from a contest. Okay, I'm gonna, um, that's part of it because I'm still, I'm a part of a contest at this moment in time with icing. Um, and icing, it was just a semifinals and actually I made top five. So um, they didn't actually have a ranking for that part but top five uh, get to move on to the Canadian finals that is going to be held in December and the winner of the Canadian final is going to be um, allowed or sent to if, at, at uh, the time when, when everything's clear um, to Malaysia so you actually compete in Malaysia representing Canada for the icing um, competition there so run by Lani Shum um, we've been really uh, having a, a great time with the the contestants and but we're also still very much following um social distancing and protocol and presentation stage aspects as, as well uh during the time i would um, love to go to malaysia yeah no i've not been i do we do have family there um in malaysia so it would be awesome to 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 go visit um later on hopefully um, and, uh, yeah, so from the, the training point of view, from the practicing point of view, I do have to um, practice uh, singing as much as I can. Um, so I, I do do that. I try to put a, an hour to a side um, to, to, to practice um, for, for that particular competition. Okay, Tyra, your turn. Yeah, but in terms of preparation, um, it all depends on the events um, and how much preparation is required for that. But I'd like, I would like to keep uh, uh, modeling as a part of my everyday life, just practicing and focusing on keeping a proper posture and presentation. All right, number nine. This, you actually went into preparations, which is actually question nine, but uh, okay. yeah, the, the eight, eight was about practice. But uh, number nine, as a model entertainer, how much time is taken for preparations, travel, and music voice lessons, if any? So I actually like that you went in preparations because it kind of landed into the next question. So that was really good. <laughs> good on you there. So go ahead and uh, take it away, Tyra, seeing as you led into this question. <laughs> So um, for modeling and entertainment, uh, it takes some time to prepare, uh, especially for your hair and your makeup, um, as well as getting to know everyone and who you're going to be presenting with. Um, I personally haven't sang in a, for entertainment, but I have uh, done dance performances, mm -hmm. and that takes a long time to prepare and practice your choreography oh, yeah, and timing yeah. of the music. Yeah, yeah. Okay, outfits Kathy. and planning. Yeah, outfits yeah. and planning, measurements, all that. <laughs> well, a lot of times with the show, even with with um, your show, Aiden, um, a lot of times is is when you're going to to model for a show, you need to make sure that you pack your bag. You need to make sure that you've got um, the shoes that might be required for that particular event. You need to make sure that you've got uh, your stockings if required, or any uh, pieces of clothing that might be needed uh, to support your um, sponsors, your designers. Um, earrings, sometimes is making sure that we have the accessories that are there, the makeup touch-ups if you're doing your makeup, your hair products. Yeah, your sometimes hair. you'll you'll need extras just in case if other people may not oh, have them. Absolutely, right? supporting others. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah through that so there is that preparation and time frame um we were so looking forward to driving out to to Brantford uh, this this weekend but we will be in October on October 24th but also making sure that you plan your timing and, and your, your drive to make sure that you get there um on time, um, time and, management. <laughs> uh, yeah part of part of that too and, and so it it is a lot of preparation and uh in in a way mm -hmm. uh in another way it's a lot of fun so thank you yes and it will be a lot of fun. Number 10, if you could name one contest, concert, pageant, or event that you were a part of recently, which would it be and why? 
All right, so let's give this one to Kathy to start. This one to me. Okay, um, I'm going to take a look at being older. My recent time frame's a little bit wider, so I'm gonna move back uh, 2011 with the um, IAFA um, event that was held at the Rogers Center is probably one of my biggest um, memory events that was there. One, it was because it did involve a, initially a little bit with Tyra and Simon because there was a filming for the IAFA, which is the, the Indian um, uh, International Academy Awards that was actually held in uh, Canada held in Toronto that year so it was very auspicious it was very special to be part of that um, I was part of the introduction uh, dance number I was actually in dance for this particular one uh, with choreographer Amy Wright famous choreographer Canadian choreographer Amy Wright and she basically was doing the Ontario presentation so we were representing uh, all the dancers that were part of it was representing um, uh, Ontario to welcome the award ceremony on the Rogers Centre stage. So just being part of that Rogers Centre stage. They also had a video clip as well that was shot beforehand and Tyra as, as when she was really young was part of that video clip and Simon, my son, was also seen in the background too. So it was one of those family events. Yeah. It was it was from a um, in a, a location and a meaningful aspect with regards to representing Ontario. It was it was cool. Okay, Tyra, your turn. Um, for me, it would probably be uh, participating uh, in Canada's Top Choice pageant. That was my first pageant that I'd ever done before. It was very memorable. It was it was very fun. I I I really loved loved doing it. Uh, the the outfits, the preparation for that, um, all that. That was it was very memorable for me. Me too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah, that was a great pageant. It's always a great pageant. <laughs> Aiden, that was the pageant I first met you as well. So thank you so much because Aiden also took uh, photographs and was there on that particular day um, for the pageant and has been active with the pageant in, in, uh, over the years. So thank you so much for, you. The, for the photographs. And yes, that, that's um, Jennifer C., the director, um, and uh, this year uh, with Kate D or yeah. being <laughs> the the um, pageant uh, organizer as yes. well, it's it's going to be exciting this year. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Number eleven, if you have been in an interview or online event, which one was it, and what was your experience? Let's give this one to Tyler. Uh, so my interview was the sit-down show with Scott Dion Brown and Regina Lena. Yeah. Um, that was very fun for me as it was uh, it was live radio. I was I've never been on radio before, um, so it was it was exhilarating. I was I was pretty nervous, but um, I thought it was very fun as we all got to relax and just basically talked about a bunch of things about Canada's top choice, yeah. about moving mm, that again, uh -huh. and a bunch of other things. About. It was really fun. Were you nervous being on radio for your first time? Yeah, I was I was kind of nervous, but I, I thought it was uh, very interesting. I got the, the headset, the microphone, all that. Like, I, I thought it was uh, really interesting. I was also very interested in um, uh, TV, TV and television broadcasting. So I was able to see um, the uh, live event between like the switcher boards and camera angles and all that being being done live. So I thought it was it was. Yeah. All right, and Kathy. Well, I was on that particular program too, which was exciting, but. Uh, also, I recall um, being part of Annie Chung's program with Fairchild Radio, which is a Chinese radio station. Um, and with their broadcast, which was right after the Canada Top, Top Choice pageant, um, being there interviewed by, by, um, by Annie was really exciting. It was also, as we, we, we talk about uh, culture days and we talk about um, celebration of diversity and heritage and things. For me, it was, it was definitely a, a great celebration to, to be on our show, but it was also a challenge too because my Cantonese, it is done in, 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 in Cantonese and my Cantonese is just a little bit uh, uh, more accented perhaps or a little more challenging for me. So, but in any case, 
um, it was it was great to be part of it and part of that show production and part of the the radio station. So yeah. How about your Mandarin? Is it any good? Not at all. It's practically non-existent. So <laughs> yes, my Mandarin is. Uh, I, I like to learn. I like to improve. And in fact, I was trying to also try. try. Isn't Mandarin more popular than Cantonese? It depends on areas. Um, it, there was a time when Cantonese was was uh, the business language, but nowadays it's kind of a two. So a lot of the uh, younger generation, which is awesome, is multilingual so a lot of them um so it's, it's quite exciting for for both languages to to be heard okay number 12 are you comfortable with online events or in-person events which one do you like better and why let's start with tyro on this one uh, i personally prefer in-person events i just find i'm more comfortable with the expressing myself when i'm in person especially when it comes to art performances dancing modeling it's just easier if it's in person as well as it's more fun you get the community everyone's together it yeah but like when it comes to um in terms of like school uh i also prefer in person i find i get more nervous online actually than in person <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Kathy. I actually prefer the in-person as well. Although the, the online world has really um, kind of expanded itself and a lot more people becoming more comfortable with the use of technology and able to uh, demonstrate their interest in art and in their interest in different uh, um, communication skills, be able to, to uh, talk about issues and ideals. Um, so it's created another forum for expression, which is fantastic, but I do prefer the ability to meet people, the ability to kind of uh, see their whole um, facial expression a little more closer, uh, to be able to engage. And you can actually feel a different energy when you're actually meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, live, in person, um, then I think sometimes that the, the, the screen offers as well. Absolutely. We're also, we're also, we've been a little bit, we're kind of joking about being paranoid. We do have a pet cat. And so from an online person, Paces, we are always wondering if the cat, because uh, he has he jumped here. onto the table several times prior to this. And you always get that, where is, yeah, where is, where is the interview? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's another challenge for those that are at, home is the environment and how you can control that mm -hmm. as well. That's right. That's true. Or you have little kids running around. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Number 13. What has been your highest achievement to date as a model entertainer? Let's start with you, Kathy. Model entertainer. I am going to go with Canada's top choice. I've been really Good choice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is being uh, such an honor to be to be selected, especially that I'm um, older. Um, so it was really uh, special. It was also an honor too because Tara and I did the event together, and to kind of share the memories, yeah. photographs. Yeah. Um, it was it it is probably a highlight, a huge highlight for me. And again, thank you, Jen, for C for for uh, organizing it and mm -hmm. allowing us to be part of that. So for me, yes. And as top, top choice. Yes. It would probably be the same for me as well as it was my first. Um, so I got uh, 2019 first runner up uh, for Miss Teen. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, as my first pageant, I would say that was a pretty big achievement for me. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be a big achievement. I, I, I would definitely put that right up there as well. And if it is your first pageant, you know, you, that's, a, that's a huge honor. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Number 14. What is the best way for someone to contact you if they want to book you for an event? Let's start with you, Kathy. Through you, through Aiden at Grace Gallery next week. Show up <laughs> or go online and watch the video when it comes out with Culture Days Mask It. Or you can find me on Instagram. Um, Instagram at... Uh, Kathy Ish 88. Kathy with a C. Okay, and you, 
Tyra, go ahead. It will probably also be Instagram at Tyra underscore underscore said. Um, that's probably the best way you're going to contact me if you need to. Okay, and number 15, this is the final question. All right, final question. Mask It, Talent and Fashion Show 2020 is coming up in October. Would you like to share a few words about this? Let's start with you, Kathy. Absolutely. How exciting, Aiden. What fantastic with Grace Gallery and having this wonderful celebration for, for Culture Day. So I know we have different people that are invited out from the social distance point of view to, to attend, but you're going to have it on Facebook. You're going to have it on the Grace Gallery YouTube site. So make sure, especially nowadays, for, for, for the support of the arts, support of visual arts, support of all the variations of of the arts um, to be there. I know in, in Richmond Hill, we've got different culture days in Vaughan and different areas in the North region. There are different celebrations that are going on. Um, I know that some of the artists are not able to be able to perform as much as they, they can. So any venue that you can celebrate, and this this is the, so important with the culture days one to, 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 to kind of be part of it, be there and to support. And Tyra. Basically, come come out to celebrate together everyone's cultures and our diversities, the arts, our mm -hmm. talents, all of that. There's going to be performances of singing and dancing and all of that. It's going to be it's going to be very fun. <laughs> I'm excited yeah, for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's a full yeah. schedule. So, and again, thank you to the sponsors as well. Um, Linden Park with with the sponsors that we have. We have Clips and we've got Maurice that are part of the 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 fashion show, I believe. Aiden. Sorry, so, what's thank that? Thank you. We have Maurice. Pardon me. Maurice, yep, Maurice, yep. yep. And yep, and Eclipse is part of the, the fashion show Correct. sponsor. Yep. So thank you. And I know there may be more too. So hopefully um, that uh, that uh, we can help support this this great. There's thing. actually quite a few sponsors. Quite a few a more. Few. Yeah, there are. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thanks to all the sponsors for sure and for all Absolutely. of them, you know, helping to support us and and backing this event up. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Each and every so one of us appreciate that. Yeah, thank um, you. So at this time, I would like to ask either of you if you have any last words or any uh, or any announcements that you guys would like to make at this time about anything. I mean, anything that you guys have coming up, anything online, any events, whatever, anything at all. Is there anything at Most all? Keep creating, <laughs> create. Um, so yes, with the arts, keep creating. Um, I know we can do, you can do things, find your moments, find your peace of mind. We're all at different um, stages and challenges that we have uh, during these times. So try to look at the positive side of things, the silver lining, try to find ways to, um, Stay engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Stay engaged in all kinds of things because there are things that are out there that we can, that definitely needs to be celebrated. Yeah, so. basically, That's why I'm wearing this shirt. It's the silver linen. Oh, ah, so yeah. <laughs> 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 um, basically, during all this, stay positive and Absolutely. then keep learning and keep yourself interested in different things. There's so much to learn, there's so much to do like work with what you got <laughs> yeah absolutely and stay safe yes thank you so much ladies and thank you for all your time and for giving your time to the grace gallery today and for culture days and i know that you mentioned culture days being in various different cities and different towns and stuff like that but it's actually canada wide it's it is. completely and totally canada wide it's an it art is. and culture event uh, and not just an arts and culture event, but it's an art, it's an annual arts and cultural yeah. festival that happens every single September, usually the last month of, usually the last weekend of September every year. September. But because of, uh, because of this year and the circumstances we find ourselves in, they've extended it for a month. And so uh, basically, uh, we've, we've been lucky this year because of that but it goes all across Canada. So, you you know, yeah. we're, we're situated in Ontario for Culture Days. We're under the Ontario Culture Days banner. But anybody in Canada can watch this. Anybody, yes. you know, anybody, you know, like, say, in Alberta or anybody who is, say, in, 
BC or anybody in Yukon or the Northwest Territories or Nunavut, they can just go on to their particular one, their culture days and say, oh, you know what? I feel like watching and seeing what's in Ontario. Oh, look at this. This looks interesting. Let's go and check mm -hmm. it. Boom. And they go right to Grace Gallery, you know, and yes. what, what videos are showing. And voila, they see the interview with the stars and they say, that sounds great. <laughs> so, you know, and then they tune into your program. There you go. You just there got you yourself over. Awesome. Thank you again, Aiden, for putting it together. It's yeah. so much um, energy and work. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And you guys have a great evening and enjoy your time tonight. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.